Welcome to the second lecture in the series, Calculus Made Easy. Concepts of Calculus, Understanding Calculus Better. The narration in this presentation is powered by SpeechOver, with computer-generated text-to-speech voices that are automatically synced with the animations. Professor Paul, I have a problem. I always got good grades in algebra and trigonometry, but when it comes to calculus I just don't get it. I am doing so poorly. Please, help me. Sure, Kate, no problem. Over the years, I've found that one of the main reasons people have trouble with calculus is because it involves brand new ideas and concepts that they haven't met before. It is very important to understand these concepts well, and then the rest is basically learning methods and operations, just like algebra. It helps to know the background and history of the subject, why was calculus developed, what problems does it solve. Isaac Newton invented the calculus to deal with problems of planetary motion. Using it, he was able to predict the position of the planets at any time, and, more than that, to predict the motion of any objects under the force of gravity. Nowadays we use the same calculus to design space satellites and send rockets into space. Generally, calculus deals with dynamic processes where things are changing, in motion, growing or shrinking, in diverse fields such as physics, chemistry, biology and many others. It lets us predict the state or position of a dynamic object or system at a future point in time, knowing its present state. This is quite different from algebra and trigonometry, which let us solve complicated, but essentially static, problems. Clearly, we need a new set of concepts for this. The first step is to make a mathematical model of the dynamic process we are dealing with. There are five new concepts, which we mention here briefly and explain in subsequent slides. The first concept is the variable, which represents the values of changing quantities in the process. Next is the function, which is a method of determining values of one variable from the values of another variable. It could be a table of pairs of the variables or it could be a formula relating them. The third concept is a function of a continuous variable, functions that are defined for the continuum of values of the variables. The limit process lets us establish values for functions where they cannot be calculated directly. The final concept is the derivative of a function, which is the rate of change of the function for a single value of the variable. Variables are letters that represent values of changing quantities in a process. Variables are classified as independent and dependent. An independent variable is a quantity whose values are known to us or is relatively easy to measure and a dependent variable is a quantity whose value we wish to determine in terms of the independent variable. For example, for an object dropped from a tower, t, the elapsed time the object has fallen is the independent variable, and d, the distance traveled, is the dependent variable. For gas expanding above a sliding piston, v, its volume, is the independent variable and p, the pressure, is the dependent variable. Parentheses are used to show the dependence of one variable on another, and we speak of d of t and p of v. A function determines the behavior of a dependent variable in terms of an independent variable in a process by establishing a correspondence between their values. For any value of the independent variable, the function gives you the corresponding value of the dependent variable. A function can be as simple as specifying a discrete number of corresponding values of the variables in a table, the natural thing to do when performing measurements of the variables. You can easily build such a function table for the distance d of a ball rolling down an incline as a function of the time. Measure the distance the ball has rolled down the incline by photographing the ball against a ruler, once a second, and enter the resulting measurements for the time and distance in a table of pairs. Galileo used a function table just like this to prove that objects fall with constant acceleration. One of the most important uses of a function is to determine values of the dependent variable that were not measured. For this purpose, a discrete function table won't work. The function needs to be defined for all values of its independent variable, for a continuum of values. A mathematical formula for the function that can be evaluated for any value of the independent variable will do the job. 
it is still basically a correspondence of values. For example, the formula D equals G over 2, T squared describes a falling object and is defined for any positive T, or the formula P equals C over V describes the pressure of gas over a sliding piston and is defined for any positive V. The graph here shows how our discrete table function of the rolling ball can be extended by means of a formula to a function defined for all positive values of t. The height of the graph for any value of the independent variable t is the corresponding value of the dependent variable d of t. It can happen that the mathematical formula for a function is not defined for some value of the independent variable, and so its value cannot be calculated there by the formula. For example, the Heaviside step function h, which is defined as h equals 0 for x less than 0, and steps up to h equals 1 for x greater than 0, is not defined at 0 itself. We can define a value for h at x equals 0 by a process called approach to the limit. We let the independent variable x approach 0, through the continuum of its values, without actually reaching 0, and see if the function value h tends to a fixed number, called the limit. For the function h, there are actually two possible limit values at 0. If we let x approach 0 through the continuum of its values for x less than 0, h approaches the limit value h equals 0. Alternatively, if we let x approach 0 for x greater than 0, then h approaches the limit value 1. Thus we could define h at 0 to be either 0 or 1. Another case is the following function which is built from our rolling ball function d of t as follows. d at t plus e minus d at t divided by e. This is the slope of the secant to d through the nearby points t and t plus e, the green line. When the points coalesce, the secant becomes the tangent to d at t. However, when we use the same formula to calculate the slope of the tangent by substituting e equals zero, the result 0 over 0, is not defined. However, if we allow e to approach 0 through a continuum of positive values, the limit value of the slope of the secant could be well defined as the slope of the tangent to the function d. As we said in the beginning, calculus has to do with expressing and predicting dynamic processes. Using our model of functions and variables, and equipped with the concept of a limiting process, we can now define the rate of change of a function f of x at a single value of the independent variable x, for example, the velocity of a moving object at time t. This is called the derivative of the function, and is one of the key concepts in calculus. The rate of change of a function at a single value is only a theoretical concept and cannot be measured or calculated directly from the function. Only the average rate of change of the function between separate values of x can be measured and calculated. The idea of the derivative is to define the rate of change at a single point as the limit of the average rate of change between two neighboring points x and x plus e, as the points approach each other. Or, more precisely, the limit, as e approaches zero, of f at x plus e, minus f at x, over e. This rate of change is called the derivative of f at x, or f prime x. Since we can do this for each x, the derivative is also a function of x. Geometrically this is equivalent to the taking the limit of the slope of the secant which tends to the slope of the tangent to the function, as discussed in the previous slide. The derivative of a function can tell us a lot about the properties of the function itself, for example, where its minimum and maximum points are, without having to evaluate the function. In summary, these are the basic concepts of the calculus, variables, function, limit process and derivative. The rest is just methods of carrying out the concept, now go and learn them. This lesson was brought to you by 2 Val Software Industries, developers of SpeechOver, for easy to create, easy to change, audio presentations for business and education using text-to-speech voices. Visit our site at www.speechover.com.